Hey, 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 welcome to the Really Cali Podcast. We are streaming, or actually we are in the studio of Abstract Music in New Bedford, Mass. And my guest today is Todd Dozerix. Uh Definitely one guy that I'm very, very impressed with. I like what he's doing. I'm extremely excited to have him here. Um, he's in town, so we have to make sure that we did this um, did this in studio and made it uh, worth our while. You know, Todd is doing amazing things with from HBO and Entourage and, and many, many other projects. Um, I put his website in the comment section, which is www.toddosereese.com. Please look on that, that website and check out all the different projects that he's been uh, creating. And this is, uh, this is something uh, that I've been waiting for quite a while. Behind the scenes, we have Justin Montero, uh, helping us out with this podcast. How you doing, Todd? Fabulous, Charlie. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. The uh, amazing thing about everything that you're doing is, is uh, you know, it's just being behind the camera, seeing, seeing you create all these different things and, and making your adjustments. And then the final product comes out and you say, wow, my friend did this. That's what I come from. I said, my friend did this. And, and being close to your family, uh, it definitely uh, something that I'm amazed with over the years. And I, I know this isn't at the bottom. This isn't the highest you're going to go. You're going to go extremely higher than this, only because your creativity shows in your work. Thanks, man. Thanks. Uh, um, but I was first amazed with you is on the basketball court. You know, that, that's, that's the thing that... Um, you know, first seeing you on the court, you're a few years older than me, and 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 seeing you guys play, whether it was at the high school, New Bedford High School, or even at times, it was a couple of times I was at, at Bridgewater State University seeing a couple of games at a young age, you know. So, um, you know, when it comes to directing and, and producing all the stuff you're doing, you were doing that on the basketball court, you know? Yeah, well, the, the point guard position, is the uh pretty much the uh, driver of the train yes and as a director of photography that's what we do we work for the director and uh get their vision on the screen so it's, it's almost like being a point guard so mm -hmm. i'm glad that i started off as a point guard and never left yeah because of my height <laughs> <laughs> i had i was destined to be a point guard but uh yeah it all started started i remember going to, to the first tryout for the Verian vets at the boys club with uh my old friend Kenny Burr mm -hmm. said, "We're gonna go to tryouts at the boys' club." I said, "Okay, let's go." Yeah, and I, I haven't dropped the ball since. So that's nice. Yeah, from Westlawn Projects to the boys' club, which is not you know right across the street, that's so right. it was easy. It's the shortest road trip. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> the um, Kenny Burr one, you know, when you, there's a guy, an athlete of all sports. The family was made up of a bunch of athletes and definitely could do almost. Any sport they want, yeah, um, and that that really comes from Westlawn. Westlawn, you know, you you created your own games, you know, during each season, and you did your thing, you know, and with the boys' club there, uh, that was that was a gem. I wish I lived that close to the boys' club. Kenny and I, our our unit was right in front of the basketball court, nice. so I literally walked out my front unit mm -hmm. onto the court and would just play all day long. And we had everybody there, was, you know, Gus Hodge, mm -hmm. Thurman London, yes. the Gonsals, the Burgos. Mm -hmm. We had everybody there. Very, um, it's those memories. And, and when you see different things on Netflix and, and all the different uh, uh, platforms and, and production, you know, they create so many different stories. And you say, wow, you know, I could have created my own story right here in Westland. You know, we can, I can do my own script and it would be just as successful. You just got to you know, figure it out. And a guy like you, which I treat to creativity, you can definitely do that. It, so you're in New Bedford. You decide, you know, go to Bridgewater. Nope. No, I went to from high school. I went to um, Babson College for a year to play basketball. Very nice. Um, and uh, Spencer, too. Well, I was I was on like the uh, 
financial aid scholarship. Okay. So I went there for a year and uh, they thought they could, it's a, Babson is a business school. Mm -hmm. They thought they could give me a independent study where I could study films. I knew I wanted to study film since I was a freshman at the high school because we had that studio there. Yeah. So um, we, Babson thought they could do an independent study for me, but it didn't really work out. And luckily I had a connection to get into a, a USC. Yes. So I transferred to USC after one one year okay. of playing basketball at, at Babson. Okay. And then I went to USC and got into the film school and started off from there. Yeah. And then my basketball career ended, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, especially what we have now from you and, and what you have given the world. Um, the pride, and, and, and we are all very, very proud of you. Um, during my year, of doing this podcast. Your name has come out several times as getting you on the Really Charlie podcast and uh, constantly, you know, and get taught on. You know, it was, it was something I had to do. And I'm glad that we were able to do this, especially for the city of New Bedford, because they, they have, um, they admire you, they like what you're doing. And this is something that we can reflect on because as a, as a society, um, before, you know, during our time and before, we don't have too much video footage of those people that inspired us in the community. And, and so we're going through word of mouth and we're trying, you know, where someone's talking about Todd or, or even the case of guys like Manny Costa and, and, and Bucky Vincent and uh, Manny Burgo. And we, we talk about those people, but as we're talking to them to the younger generation, they need to see that video footage, mm -hmm. you know, they need to see it. It kind of puts a, uh, um, a person with the, the conversation, you know. So it's good that we have this video footage of you along with many other things that you do. Um, for me, when I left this area and went to L.A., it was a culture shock for me. When you got there, how did you feel going into, you know, L.A. County and, USC, which, which, is, which is a city within LA to me, it was. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, it was uh, it was very shocking just because when I was on my way there, it was luckily I went with a bunch of USC students from Massachusetts, all all on the same flight. Nice. Um, and then uh, we get there, and uh, I don't have a place to live yet, so. <laughs> <laughs> so we have all these freshmen that all you know live on campus or close to campus and I didn't have a place to stay. And luckily I just started talking to people and literally slept on someone's love seat mm -hmm. that lived off campus and I got an apartment off campus from yes. from those guys that were living there. But yeah, Los Angeles was, you know, coming from New Bedford, which probably had hundred and fifty thousand back when I left in eighty three. Mm -hmm to go to a city that has millions, yes. literally millions. And it's, you know, I don't know how many miles wide it is, but it's huge. Um, it was, uh, it was shocking, but uh, I just was focused on what I had to do, which was get into the film school. Cause when I first got there, I wasn't even in USC film school yet. I just went mm -hmm. to, cause I got ad admitted to general, you know, population of USC. And it took me three tries wow. to get into the film schools because at the time, USC Film School was the number one film school in the country. So every semester I applied, every semester, every semester. And the third time I finally got in, I think they were just tired of seeing my application. They said, <laughs> let's just let him in and get it because I don't have to see his application anymore. Yeah. But yeah, I always tell I always tell that story because it's like, people are going to tell you no, yes. but you have to just keep going. Mm -hmm. keep going what's you know keep your eyes on the prize and just keep going i knew i wanted to study film and i wanted to study film at usc so was, I, it, was it itself was it your dream or were you inspired by someone to do this i, mean, I don't know it's like when i was growing up in new bedford i i mean i grew up in a, a single parent house you know project yeah and uh i was always at the at the uh, state theater before it was like like Tyrion, it was exactly. the state theater and i was there every weekend Okay. Sometimes Saturday, Sunday, you know, see a triple feature over and over and over. Mm -hmm. I just love, I just love films. And my mother told me I, I watched a lot of television, which I probably did, but uh, it was the film, the films yeah. that got me. And uh, when I got to the high school, 
I started in the you know photo lab and then I started running the TV studio there. Mm-hmm. So I, it was kind of like, I, I knew what I wanted to do at a young age. So I was lucky, mm-hmm. you know, I think, cause a lot of kids today, they don't know what they want to do until mm-hmm. they're like sophomore in college. Exactly. But I was lucky. I knew in high school, I wanted to study film and, and be a filmmaker. So nice. And as, uh, as you do that and you're at the state theater, all the double features, Bruce Lee, you know, you talked about, you know, my first love was uh, Pam Grea and, <laughs> <laughs> and seeing on that screen, you know, it was definitely something that we, we were able to, to have in our community was something for us to do. As, and, and we were all good in there. We were well behaved in there, you know, other than the Kung Fu fights at the end of it, you know, <laughs> so, and, um, you know, it, it was good. And as you get to the high school, and you talked about the studio there in the high school, you couldn't help but see that, you know, the doors were open and it was like an off, wow, what's in there? You want to check it out? So I can imagine as a freshman walking in there and you just saying, wow, this is something I want to do. Oh, I, I mean, I walked into USC Film School, which has a Spielberg stage wow. and a George Lucas stage and Johnny Carson mm-hmm. sound studio. It, it's like, oh, my God. Yes. You know, so it was it was amazing. And I was I, I was a little overwhelmed. But, you know, you just have to, like I said, just keep, keep, your, keep your head down and get going, doing what you have to do. And I took the class I needed to take and graduated. So it was great. Yeah. I mean, I was like there's there was no reason for me to be able to go there. Like there's like kid from Westland projects going to USC. Mm-hmm. That's, sh- I mean, that should never have happened, but yeah. it's like, I didn't, I didn't know better. You know, I just said, I'm going, I'm going there. And people were like, you're going where? Mm-hmm. You- <laughs> <laughs> it was on the other side of the country. And people were like, wow. It, it, I'm glad you made that happen. And, and that's what it takes. It takes something to, um, takes that ambition, that, that determination, that drive. I mean, look at the gentleman here in this building, you know, Mikey Montero, mm-hmm. pretty much did the same thing and look how it's turned out for him. And uh, he bring it back here. Right. And uh, so great, great stories. And, and who gave you a first break? Oh my God. Well, you have to go back to my teachers and my coaches. Mm-hmm. Are you talking about my first break in the business or I, I, I take, my teachers and and coaches that I had like the Robbie Mendes, mm-hmm. the Eddie Rodericks, yes. the Mrs. Purcells of Miss Bizarro, Mr. Oliver at the high school. I mean, I had so many good role models. And you think, well, you're in the Westland Projects. Mm-hmm. I was like, that didn't matter. No, I found the good people, and they found me one or the other. But yeah, yeah that that I think that's my first break. Mm-hmm. You know, just getting good teachers and good coaches, Robbie and JoJo coaching me in basketball and football. I'm trying to remember who else I had. Um, Mr. Brito probably was the coach. Um, I mean, I had so many in playing for the Verdian Vets football and basketball, and then going to OLOA, playing for OLOA, yes. you know, trying to sneak, not going to church on Sunday and still trying to play kind of thing. That rule, mm-hmm. remember that rule? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, high school but i mean if you're talking about first break in the business it's like it's hard to say yeah um so there's so many people that i have to thank for where i am today um just watching you know films and admiring films is probably a a, a big plus but uh yeah let me get back to you on the big okay. the who who because yeah there's so many people that have given me chances and I did a lot of music videos when I first started because mm-hmm. you couldn't get into, we were, I wasn't even a union then. So I did a lot of music videos. Uh, there's a, a music video director now. He does a lot of commercials now called Paul Hunter. He and I hooked up. So that was a, that was a good big break. Um, yeah. Russ Carpenter, who's a director of photography who, who won the Academy Award for Titanic as a director of photography. He basically took me under his wing when I was a, a production assistant yeah, and I went from production assistant to camera assistant on his show. And that was probably the biggest break. And we, I'm still, you know, indebted to him and he's still in my life. Um, I'm a part of this uh, society called the American society of cinematographers, okay. where you have to be, you have to be brought into the, the society by three members. And he was the first one to say, I want 
I went Todd in the in the membership. Amazing. And this was this was like 20 years after I had worked with him. You know, he's and he's still I think he's doing Avatar now or Avatar two and three. But that's a that was a big break. Um, kind of like Steve Steve Pemberton from the Bedford. Um, he mentions about you know with all these different things he's been doing. Uh, and his latest book is called Lighthouse. And all those people are kind of your lighthouses. Mm -hmm. And um, it, and ever since I read that book and, and, and just speaking to him about it, you know, it just, uh, it really, I started thinking, who was my lighthouse? You know, and, and you mentioned all those different people, which were kind of part of my life also. And, um, you know, Jojo, Jojo Mendes, um, we took that annual Thanksgiving Day uh, picture, Michael Klein, and Jojo and I were talking in the gym, which led to outside the gym. And I said, wow, I just missed the podcast. I missed the podcast where he talked about, you know, the kids he coached, you know, the days he played, you know, and and that was just a podcast, a podcast in itself. And the guy inspired so many people. And it's, you know, between, you know, Robbie speaks for itself, you know, Bucky Vincent, Mr. Oliver. I mean, Mr. Oliver was one of the first persons I met, you know, coming back home from Florida that was there. And, and Mr. Oliver was one of the first people that I met at the high school. And, uh, you know, so, but uh, it's, it's amazing. Those people have been lighthouses for decades. And, uh, and I'm pretty sure that you are inspiring many other people too, you know, the stuff you're doing. Um, and I want you to keep up, keep up that good work, man, because we do need it in this city. Um, and you see different people coming into this building. Justin, Justin can attest to it. It's, um, it, it's just amazing, you know, got to get this talent out there, got to get them out there. So um, what's new? What's going to be new for Todd Doris? What are you going to do? You know, Michael can say so, Colin. Oh we better get him on the, on the yeah. line. I'm sure he has a lot of questions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Michael? Listen, I can barely hear you. I can barely hear you, Michael. Oh. Uh, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I know you like talking. Just wait a minute. <laughs> right, down, down, <laughs> Michael, you there? Tell him to send his questions in. Yeah, Michael, you got a comment from the section. You know, I think it's. All right, we hear you now. Michael, can you hear us now? Talk, Mike. Oh, there you are. What's yeah. up, Kaz? Who's this? Who's this? The, the best point guard in your family. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Who's first? Come on now. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Mm -hmm. You can't even make a free throw. <laughs> You've been struggling. Listen, yeah. like I always tell you, you've been struggling from that free throw <laughs> because you were taking free throws at Salvation Army and that crooked hoop. You couldn't. <laughs> yeah. Get a good man, a good man. Mark Dias almost yeah. went to Babs. And what are you talking about? Yeah, see, you don't know that story, do you? 
Oh, that's right. He went to Bridgewater. Okay. Well, I know the whole truth that you don't share your food, so that's why Mark <laughs> left. <laughs> Do you, do you have a question or are yeah, you just you harass question? us? Because we have important people like Ron Andrews that has a question for my guest, you know. We just on the show right on February 29th. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, brother. Yeah, we love you, bro. You keep up the good work, man. You are calling in there. <laughs> see what you're hijacking the yeah. show. See what Framingham State has got you. You 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 dial a telephone and you don't know that you're on the air. I mean, you called in. Next, we'll be talking about Holy Family. Come on. Yeah. Let's hang up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Uh, we got no. Listen, there's a cousin right there, live. You know. <laughs> hey, Mike. We got to get to some questions. Out, all right. All right, bro. All right. <laughs> all right, Michael Khan, always a caller for the Really Charlie podcast. All right, my guess is see here. Uh, your your friend Ron Andrews says, yes. please ask him about his first music video <laughs> with the band. Is it limo, Le limo, limo. All limo. right. So I was I was probably halfway through USC, and Ronnie had started. I think he may have left Bridgewater to mm -hmm. start to start his band or join a band. And in the summertime, he wanted me to come and do a music video. Okay. So we, we came up with a concept, and uh, we shot the video. Actually, Michael Consatio played a role as a, a, a police officer. Oh, wow. Yeah, we had him in the, in the beach uh, pulling up a body out of the water. So that was Michael Consatio. But, yeah, we did a, a, a limo video, very inspired by the late, great Prince. And uh, I think Ronnie has the footage. If you'd like to share that with uh, the Real Charlie podcast, he can, we can bring it on. I'm, I'm definitely going to get that footage. <laughs> we'll, we'll get that footage. Um, let's see. Damon Amanda says we can't hear him at all. Well, I can't hear me. We're all right. That was right there. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> all, right. all right. Let's see. Um, let's see. All right. We're going to go. Yeah. Maybe the volume. And. I think I'm good. Anyways, the um, I think we're good. The um, Ron says first music video asked about our ghetto fog machine. So we we shot part of it at the band club. Yeah, that's where we did the performance piece. Oh, the OT Grim stage there. Yeah. yeah. We had the stage and we had uh, we shot some of the concept footage at the beach and my aunt's shower, my aunt Marie's shower and um, Jamie Consatio, Michael Consatio's aunt in the in Wareham in the hot tub. But then we came to the band club and shot the performance piece and we needed a fog machine that we couldn't afford. So luckily, the uh, the patrons at the band club who all smoke cigarettes. Mm -hmm. We're just below the bar, puffing smokes to add to our <laughs> atmosphere, so we can get that nice hazy purple rain look. So that was our ghetto fog. Oh, real nice, real nice. It, they were happy to oblige us. See, <laughs> Ron and his brother Derek, Mike Samayo, they were all guests on the Really Tally podcast, and um. And some of the stories they had about basketball, is, it was nice to hear. Um, and the uh, 
it's 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 amazing that you know that how we all kind of get together have a lot in common and ron and i haven't really been you know we got to be better friends this past year you know we see each other hi goodbye i don't know hi hello it's been several years it's been a few years and um one thing i admired about him and his brother is is how they were on the basketball court and you know they were going to give it it all and um and that's similar to you you know you um, i see you him and mark kind of you got a friendship there you have a bond you all kind of similar player you know you're all going to go out all out from from start to end and and it's amazing that um you know how guys like you and and uh, mark were teammates for how long mark guys and i played together from uh probably high school i mean we played the summer league together so yeah. I, I can't i don't even know how many years but it was i don't think we played little league together but i think we played after that so but we were always playing at Buntwood Park or Monty's yeah. mm-hmm. or United Front. So, and Ronnie was always there too, even though he lived in Fairhaven, you know? Yeah. So he was always with us, Derek, sometimes. Um, but yeah, we, Mark and I played together. It was it was easy being a point guard with Mark because yeah. I knew where to give him the ball and that was automatic too. Like, wish, I wish we had three-pointer back then because yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he would average more points. But definitely. he scored enough at Bridgewater. Mm-hmm. He's got a thousand point basketball. Yeah. Good accomplishment. And I wasn't even there. <laughs> <laughs> Who is um who's that one person, that one person that you know of that um you know there's always somebody that's on the sideline, maybe uh that should be on the basketball court, whether it's in the playground or um or in the high school or the university. Who's that one person or, or maybe several people? that you wish you played for or played with throughout, you know, that one particular teammate, you know, there's always someone, whether it was, I mean, coming out of New Bedford high school, just coming out of this area. Yeah. I mean, I, that could be a half hour of your yeah. show. Um, I mean, Mickey Gonzalez, I mm-hmm. would average 20 assists a game was playing with Mickey Gonzalez, yes. Tony Lapina, um, Eric Britter was lo- lovely to play with. I was a s- Carlos Martin and I were sophomores sitting on the bench when Eric was doing his thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I would love to play with him uh, more. Um, Derwin Watkins. Yes. Awesome. Um, if Robbie Mendes had gone to high school with me, that would have been awesome because he just fire from anywhere. Yes. Uh, there's so many. I mean. It's just for conversation. Yeah. Because I mean, like you said, it, it could go on for a long, long time. And I like basketball stories. Um, and the uh, – you know, just hearing those basketball stories um, is something that, that I like to hear and I like to pass on to different people, whether it's coming from you to, you know, through me or something like that, you know. The, uh, uh, Mike Samuel is doing a book on all these different basketball stories. And it's amazing what he's come up, come up with it now. Um, uh, have you thought about doing a book about yourself? You know, or letting someone kind of ghostwrite it. What would you do? You know, I never thought about it. Uh-huh. <laughs> I have never thought about it, but I'd be happy to. If anybody wants to write a book about me, I'd be happy to give them the information. But I have never thought about it. I'm more of a visual person, as, yeah. as you can see in my my website, as and what I do for a living as a director of photography. Um, I've never thought about a book, but that's a very interesting question. Okay, <laughs> it's um the uh. Let me see. Uh, I have um, some of the people that um, I've been grabbing some old pictures of different basketball players, you included. And I've been putting them on my Facebook page and trying to add as much as possible. You know, I don't say New Bedford's best. I say New Bedford's favorite. You know, one way or another, there was someone that was, you know, was was you know like what well, my favorites you know my favorites were Kenny Francis, Keithy Francis, Stevie Ramis, you know those are the guys that I enjoyed watching. Johan, Stevie Gomes, you know Edmund Gomes. It was amazing as as uh, I got the tail end of Edmund. He was well out of high school, well out of college, a grown man, um, 
and I, I played a couple of games with him. And I said, this is why everyone admires Edmund Gomes, you know. He just got everybody involved, no matter what. And uh, as quick as I thought I was, I couldn't even steal the ball from him. I tried to try the best I could, you know. But he was a strong man, you know. The basketball stories out of the city are amazing. And and so when they come when people like you come on here, I, I want to talk basketball. And you have the knowledge, you, you you have the capabilities, you're still playing. You were playing today, you know. Let's let's not go crazy on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was shooting and running up and down the court by myself. How many of your friends are not shooting though, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I still would I still would play in Los Angeles if I could find a group of guys that you know, or wanted to play and were knew what how old they were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, it's hard, it's hard to find. So I I've switched to actually I start I play started playing soccer about twenty years ago. Okay, and I play more soccer. I play soccer once a week. I've seen some pictures and some footage of that. Yeah, that's, a, that's an amazing. One thing about soccer, your legs are gonna be. Well, in shape, and it, I mean, I think it's a game that you know, instead of running around the neighborhood, guess what? Well, play some soccer, have some fun. You know, I got introduced to soccer, believe it or not. You would think it would come from New Bedford, Massachusetts, but it was actually in LA. Me it too. Was the first time I participated in, in it because it was all over the place, right? And, um, you know, uh, I'll never forget it was a track coach, he had told me to go play some soccer, you know? and I said, All right play and he told me to, who to go see and I ended up playing soccer for a season and it was really nice. Really? In LA? Yeah. For high school or? Uh, middle school. Oh, yeah, cool. I in middle school. I was, uh, yeah, that was middle school time for me. Um, and I uh, left here in 70, 79. Uh, went in about five years of my life and then I uh, came back home. So I was a California. I didn't know that. Florida. And then I came back to graduate from the bread and white, you know, <laughs> which I love. I, I, I wanted to play and graduate from the best high school. And I'm glad that happened. Um, let's see. I believe this is coming from Michael Kahn. <laughs> so it was my top 125 basketball players of the South Coast. Wait, I thought it was I thought it was a hundred. Yeah, he was what hundred. happened? Yeah. I was in the hundred. I was gonna fill one twenty five. Look. I dropped down? Yeah. Dang, dang, cuz. I yeah. dropped out of the one hundred. Pick your friends, can't pick your friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. No more so, questions? I I just wanna <laughs> highlight you is how can we highlight you, man? How could we Know your next project. What is what is it going to be? Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know. I just finished. Uh, literally during the pandemic, we uh, our industry, our film industry, got shut down for, I guess, it was six to eight months, and uh, where nothing was happening, no one was working, and then uh, so from March to October, I wasn't doing anything but working out and uh, uh, watching films, but. Um, Come October, I started on the show called um, Rebel okay. with Katie Segal and Andy Garcia. That was on ABC for for a few months. So I did that, and then I jumped on uh, a spinoff of a show that some some of your viewers might know. Originally, it was called Bosch, mm -hmm. but the show I did is a spinoff called Bosch Legacy. Same character, Harry Bosch, with his daughter and the lawyer, uh, Mimi, played by Mimi Rogers. So I did that after the, after Rebel. So Bosch Legacies, I think it will start airing um, on IMDb, mm -hmm. the new a new network, a new streaming network, IMDb. I think December maybe. Okay. And so after Bosch was done, I went right into a, a feature film called The Blackening, which is a horror comedy directed by uh, the world famous Tim Story. Tim Story did. Uh, both Fantastic Four movies. He did uh, Think Like a Man. He did um, Tom and Jerry recently. Mm -hmm. So we we did that for a couple months, and we we just finished just before Thanksgiving. Yeah. So I actually probably will still have to go back and do some pickup shots. Okay. So that that will come out uh, Halloween 2022. Very nice. But I have nothing coming up 
after that. So we'll have to see what happens when I get back home. I'm going to continue to follow your website and continue to grab things from that website and, and continue to share it on the Really Sorry podcast group on Facebook. And um, it's uh, this is this is something that I've been trying to do, wanted to do. Um, and I'm glad I'm doing it. I'm doing all the things that I didn't do throughout my career. I'm able to you know, be on a radio station, WMB1, this podcast. And it's and just kind of following some dreams, you know. Um, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a one thing I find out is there's so many different stories in the city that I'm getting a hold of. And I don't have enough time to get all those people on the podcast. I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to send him in different directions. Send him in Justin Montero's direction, you know, so he can do some things here with them. Uh, who would you like to see on the Really Tally podcast? Oh wow, this feels like the Desus and Mero. <laughs> what do you want in your bodega? Uh, who do I want on the podcast? Have you had Eric Riddle? Uh, we tried a couple of times. I would love to have him because it's it's. He's got some stories, and I want to have him on here. So, Eric, if you're out there listening, please, please. How about the Mendes brothers? Robbie, Jojo. Robbie George. was. Robbie did it already? Yep. George, not yet. Jojo, um, I know he would be ready for it. Um, so I would like to have um, them on it. In fact, Silky, Derek Baptiste, had a, he did a, a podcast with uh, – I believe it was Robbie and, and uh, Tony, and and he still he lost some of the footage, you know, oh, yeah. and it was it's too bad because they were talking about things like the the tar park down the south end, you know, before Monty's and and stuff like that, and it was real real deep. So, oh, I know. How about how about? Well, here's I, I mean I have to go way back for one, and not so far back for the other couple. Doran Watkins, I'd love to hear his I stories. Like to, to send him a couple of messages. So. Um, and uh, I'd like to hear from Marcus Wills and Brian Rudolph, because yeah. not many of us have played Division One mm -hmm. college basketball. I mean, I played Division Three, which is a big drop off. Yes. So I'd like to hear those those stories because they have stories that people love to hear. Because no, not many of us have played. Mm -hmm. Because you know, New Bedford, we only go up to six two, six three. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> So we would love to hear the Division One basketball stories, you know. I would, um, I will do that. Um, I reached out to Marcus several months ago. He was kind of busy; his schedule was tough. Um, Brian's just a phone call away, so okay. I'm gonna have to reach out to him very, very soon and get him on in so we can talk those different stories. Uh, let's see, uh, Facebook, Bay Village. <laughs> Somebody says, look at the Bay Village legends. You lived in the Bay Village town? I didn't really live. I, I, Well, see, I was born in the South End yeah. on, on Pleasant Street. And I spent some time. I had family that lived in the Bay Village. So yeah. I was always there. My cousin, Tony Green, yeah. in the Bay Village catching pigeons. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> so, I mean, it's, I guess people thought I lived there. But that's fine. Yeah. I'm, all, I'm all good with the Bay Village. Some well, of my closest friends, Carlos Martin. Grew up in the Bay Village. Mm -hmm. He did, you know, 18 years in the Bay Village. So I was there for the first seven years of my life, and then I moved to the Westland Projects. But even when I was in the Westland Projects, I was always riding my mm -hmm. blue 10-speed Schwinn down to Monty's to play basketball, and then you know go back to United Front or play and play at the Bonwood Park. So good Bay Village, yeah, Bay Village. I actually have a picture of uh, your Uncle Mickey in the Bay Village. Uh, I'm sure it tie. Might be a sweater or suit coat. Oh, you gotta send that one to me. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely get that to you. Um, and, uh, but I love the projects. I'm glad I was raised and born where I was. Right. Wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Absolutely. Um, and uh, stories are amazing. I did a walk by after I was playing basketball at the boys club by myself again last week, and I walked through the West Lawn and looked at my unit. Mm -hmm. They had taken both basketball court, uh, backboards down and the rims. So it's just two poles, yeah. no fence. So it's like, what are the kids? I mean, that would have been a great opportunity for those kids that live there now to have, you know, a basketball. We had a, we had a fenced in court 
And we, we don't not only played basketball, we played kickball, we played mm-hmm. baseball. I mean, do so many things. And I don't know if they took it down for COVID, but they need to get that back up. Yeah, they sure do. They sure do. Um, good friend of mine, Joey Gonzalez, we talked about the Westlawn stories and his family and the Virgo family. Yep. Um, and, uh, and the walls were very thin. You heard a lot of stories, you know. <laughs> You didn't have to watch TV back then. You put your ear to the wall, the ear to the wall. You can hear everything, you know. And we not only did we do that, you could hear everything. But it was, you know, me, the Burgos, Gonzales, and here's the basketball court. And I'm the older kids. I remember they went to the Earth, Wind, and Fire concert. Mm-hmm. And I think it had to be summertime. But the Burgos had set up a tent, so we had we could sleep in the tent overnight. And they had the older kids had come back from the concert, and they were sharing. Mm-hmm. All the stories and wow. it was like, wow, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Joey was probably there. Yeah, it was probably, he probably Joey. Was. <laughs> uh, he says, yeah, I miss those days with you and, and uh, say John Todd. John Gonsalves, David Gonsalves, yeah. Cam, Larry, Laura, yeah, little Danny. Mm-hmm. Little Danny's not little anymore, but he's up in yeah. he's up in New Hampshire now. That's it, oh. working with bulls. Yeah, there you go. This is thing. The uh, See. Just want to read a couple of these comments. Yeah. Somebody has a question for you. It's Facebook user, so that has to be Michael Cohn. <laughs> <laughs> Does Todd Carl's Martin, Jeffrey Martin, and Donald Lesser, Brian Bruda, Eddie, Eddie Gomes, and the Con Mans, tremendous point guys. We never we never work with tall talent. <laughs> well, and you had had some strong people, you know. They, they, there's one thing about New Bedford; they had strength. Whether you were a point guard down to a center, you know, or a center that should be a point guard, you know, the strength was unbelievable. And many, many people can jump out of the gym. They go from Claude, um, Greg Sanders, um, you know, Kenny Francis. Uh, Keithy was supposedly uh, a real good basketball player that mm-hmm. he that gets hidden behind his track legacy, you know. Right. Michael forgot one of the best point guards, Flea. Yeah, exactly. Come on, Jason Michael, he's slipping. Yeah, he's slipping. You know, it uh, might be that time of day for Michael. <laughs> I can, so, and Flea was was amazing. You know, he definitely helped me a lot. You know, working on my left hand. You know, because he knew my tendencies, and he was going to try to steal it from the right. So I drew a little bit more of my left, and mm-hmm. that usually didn't work either because you know how he was, you know. Uh, quick, light, light, man. Yes, very quick. Um, and then, you know, please, another one. You talk about D1 and, and, and playing. Uh, I know he had a stint at the uh, – college level for maybe a semester and then came back home, you know, but I would love to see him, you know, play at the college level because of what we seen during the summer tournaments, you know, when he was playing the the guys from Boston and, and Connecticut, and New Jersey, and uh, uh, a couple of teams from New York when they used to come down during the, during our annual uh, shootout there during the recognition uh, week. And Flea did, held his own, you know, he held his own and you knew where he could play, you know, and, and those guys were playing at, at the collegiate level. So uh, he's a, a podcast in itself, but I know him, he just doesn't want to get into it. He'd probably do the audio thing. As far as video, I don't think Flea would do it, you know, but um, the uh, Famous or infamous Mike Heron talks about Flea all the time. You know, we have conversations about him, you know, and uh, and Mike tells a lot of stories and admired him as a player, you know. Um, before there was AAU, there was teams like Buddies and so on and so forth, their traveling team, and they would go all over the place. Yeah. So, yeah, I had this um, conversation with somebody in the last week uh, because when I was in school, when Colin and I were in school, there was a controversy over, and maybe your viewers can chime in, that uh, whether Carlos and I were better than uh, Willie McDonald and Brian O'Neill. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't think there's a controversy. 
but you know, what do, let's see what your viewers say if, they, mm -hmm. if we have time. All right. And I it actually, I remember Buddy Thomas put it in the newspaper that they were the best uh, guard tandem in in the in the area. Mm -hmm. And after we beat them, I went into the press room or the, the coach's room and asked them, what do you think now? Yeah. And no comment. Didn't, so. didn't do no re But I, I think, I, I don't know how many people can say this from New Bedford, but I never lost a Durfee in basketball in Very my nice. four years. Very nice. But you can check the records on that. I may, I might be incorrect, but I doubt it. It's a, you were part of a, where both bleachers were filled in that gym. And there was no room. You came late to the game. That's what you were. You were trying to squeeze in there, a friend, a relative, or something like that. Um, to see the numbers, how low they are now, is 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 amazing. Kind of sad a little bit. Um, and uh, I wish, like, maybe I need to go to cable access. So guys like Michael Kahn that are down there at cable access, you know, put some of those games on the air, you know, and let people see, you know, the the uh, the competition, the spirit, spirit is can't touch it, can't touch the spirit from back then to now. It's just you know, unless the area schools go to the state tournament, then the crowds start coming out. Mm -hmm. You no know, fair weather fans or something like that. Uh, yeah, there were cable. Cable used to record some of our games. I don't know if there's any tape left or mm -hmm. if it's disintegrated or what. But there was some. I don't know if the school was recording our games or. Uh, Willing City Cable was. To try to look for some, and the problem the 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 year is 1996. So anything prior to that, it's very hard for them to find. Um, and so usually you got to ask um, someone, maybe you know, a, a dad or uncle or somebody has some old footage, you know, and then kind of convert it. Um, that's going to be hard. To yeah. So I was trying to find so much for, especially for some of the podcasts that I had. Mm -hmm. And um, that was very, very difficult. Um, so if anybody has any footage, send it to yeah. Charlie Perry. Yeah. We're, we're looking for footage. There. Anywhere from 79 to 82. <laughs> so we can get the Eric Brittle, the Mark Dias, Todd Dos Reese, Bobby Duart. Let's see. This, we got a couple of comments here. Hmm. Not from Michael Concession no, again. Okay. It might be. So the key <laughs> was when the best players played against the best of the best in the shootout, Peter Ribeiro was one of the best to perform in the basketball shootout. Uh, a lot of New Bedford players did not perform to the expectation, which I, I don't like that. <laughs> I think the best basketball players came to play. Mike Samayo says, best guard tandem then myself and Jimmy Hennessy, guards in the South Coast from Massachusetts, were very, very strong. So I think Michael's agreeing with you. Um, but your tandem. No, he said his tandem's better. His tandem? Yeah. Well I can I can try to get Carlos out of uh out of LA and we can get that two on two going, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Todd and Carlos was uh that tandem that was just was great, and no disrespect to you, Mike. You know I love you, brother. The um, let's see. All right, we got forty. So we got about nine minutes or less. You know, I will keep it. Um, my tandem is Gary Dias and Mike Fields. Awesome. awesome. Loved watching them. Grew up watching them in Westlawn. Yeah. Westlawn Project mm -hmm. Legends. Across the street. Yeah. It, 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 I agree. I will not, <laughs> Carlos and I would not compete with them. No. It's strong. They were strong ball men. Players. Yes. Men were. playing high school basketball. Mikey Fields was a request to come on this podcast. Oh, I'd love to see that. Yeah, I would too. Um, all right. Well, Todd, I, uh, I'm very, very happy to have you on here. It's, uh, was it, it this is a great, great timing for your show because December 5th is my one year anniversary and you're here on December 6th. And uh, I am glad that my, my year is closing with you. Um, and uh, 
this is definitely something special to me. I really appreciate all you're doing for yourself and the community, family, and both states, California and Massachusetts, because um, your determination has given you entourage and, and the many, many other projects that you had were involved in. I'm going to continue to highlight you as best I can um, through your webpage. So as you're posting things, I'm going to put it up and just keep that following going, you know. Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Uh, congratulations on all your success. Thank you. I, I watch it once in a while when I have time. I, I always enjoy it. Um, so, yeah, keep keep doing it what you do. It's been fun. Uh, it sure will. I'm going to continue to do it. And, um, so we gone to the best wishes to you, um, Stevie Loeb. So to ask Todd who was the best guard he played against in high school, I say Greg Simpson. Well, no, it's good to do from Madison Park. This is Stevie Loeb. Um, yeah, I'd have to say uh, Greg Simpson because I don't remember the other guards that I played against <laughs> other than Brian O'Neill. Is it Brian O'Neill? Yeah, and uh, Willie McDonald. Who I, Willie McDonald I actually became good friends with. Um, Carlos was really good friends with him. But yeah, Greg was probably the best uh, guard I played against. Greg, Greg's going to come on. He already committed. He said he would come on. So I can't wait to have that on there. Um, Max, you're going to co-host. I'm going to have a co-host, David Consatio. And David and Greg have a good rapport. And we're going to talk, you know, shop, you know. And Greg's a good, he would be a great, great podcast. So. I can't wait to do that this coming year. Sounds fun. All right. So I'm going to work on that list. Um, and the first guy I'm going to reach out to is Eric Brito. Nice. Because I have his number. Um, and he's right down the street. Yeah. And I'll reach out to Brian. <laughs> I'll get Brian on here. Um, and, uh, and we're going to do my do my thing on this podcast within the next couple of weeks. Wait for the holidays to go through. And then I'll have those guys. On the podcast. I look forward to it. If you need help with anybody else, let me know. All right. I'll put a fire into some people. Thank you. All right, everyone. My tremendous guest here, Todd Dosrice, and continue to follow follow him. I left his website in the comment section. Um, and uh, glad to have him on it. Justin Montero, thank you for your production expertise and technology. We did a, a great thing from abstract music. Here at 7 North 6th Street in Bedford, Mass. And uh, thank you, everybody, for your constant support and love for the Really Jolly Podcast. Have a great, great night.